Greetings YouTube, this is BJ Black, and welcome to my playthrough of the 2.40 version of Mon Moose Quest Paradox RPG. This was just released a few weeks ago, and I've worked through what I need to show you, so here we go. First new content, we got this here. A strange puppet. What's this? This puppet. This is the first in my line of created puppets. And its name is Chrome Doll Mark I. Isn't it kind of weak looking? Yeah, at the very least, the intention of this particular prototype is to see where my doll creating skills are at the moment. By repeatedly updating it, I plan on bringing it to a fully completed state. Mark 1's endurance capabilities are extremely high, so it's impossible, absolutely impossible, to destroy it. You can use it as a sandbag for testing your damage. And that's the story. If you want to try fighting this thing, you can fight it. You'll do a bunch of damage. Alright, thanks guys. Nothing to do but run away when you're tired of it. Or surrender if you feel like it, but it doesn't show you anything. You'll just get a regular game over. Alright, here's our bulletin board. Amira gave us bad info, yeah, I know. And she can it can rot. In Elias Berg forever for all I care. Alright. I'd like to contact Hakunen for work. Please come and speak to me where I am in this on this floor. Uh, I get a bad feeling about this. This is contact concerning work. Kazuya, please come to where I am. Somehow I get a bad feeling about this. Yeah, I promise things like that, guys. <clears throat> Sorry about bothering you over and over again. Amongst the documents in the remaining in the village, I found an interesting record. There's a job that existed in ancient times but has been lost. If you're interested, come to my place in Succubus Village. <clears throat> in this world, there is a disease spreading. A disease called despair. Already, pictures alone will not do the task. I myself will head out. So, I want to save the people of Yamatai Village first. Please, take me to Yamatai Village. And here we've got a weird thing pinned on the board. H E L P. What is this? A silver candy wrapper with white ink? This is. Lick. Sweet. That's not white ink, it's cream. The flavor is. Without a doubt, the cake yoma candy. Why do you know how she tastes? Come to think of it, I get the feeling like I haven't seen him around today. Hmm. Seems like something's happened to the candy. Let's go see what's up. Candy's location is the Pocket Mowell Castle, second floor, east. I shall create a new job at once. Come to the center of the Citadel of Creation. Why is Elias a message from Elias on our message board? Did she sneak in here somehow? Well, setting that aside, 
we do have an interest in new jobs. So, south of Snow Heaven, let's go to the Citadel of Creation. In order for you to temper yourselves, I've prepared a battle challenge. Come to meet me in the underworld. And just what is this? It's a blank sheet. Who pinned this on our message board? As expected, aside from me, no one can see it. And that's all the messages. Let's just go in order. And in order goes promising, promising. Ah, I've been waiting for you. Just a bit here, I'd like you to cooperate with my experiments. Well, if it's something I can do for you, I'd like to help. But I can't do anything reckless. I'm currently researching ways of race changing between the different races. By the way, Hakunin, you're an occultist, are you not? Yes, although I'm still in training. Occultists are able to use the techniques of monsters, right? In your training, in order to use these monster techniques, you need to change your body a bit. Or something like that. Yes, that's what I've been taught. I see. Truly interesting. So in an occultist's body, it should have a high affinity for demi-human DNA. So, that being the case, Hakunen, would you allow me to extract some of your X? X? What? Wait. Ikaraku. Yeah, I think everybody can guess what was involved with that. <laughs> All right, I've extracted some X. So let's distill it and this and that. I did it. This X is usable by humans who have reached level 10. With a high density of, uh, let's say, monster spirit in it, they'll be able to change into demi-humans and Yorma. Two at once, huh? So this X, what's its name? Let's take the name of Hakunin, who contributed to this and name it Hakunin X TM Hakunin X huh? can't we do something about that name just wait you forgot the TM its full proper name is Hakunin X TM be careful with that that makes me feel complicated yeah. <clears throat> so there we are. Another race change has become possible. Humans really are convenient, aren't they? <laughs> and she wanted to talk to someone else as well. Oh, thank you for coming, Kazia. Right away. Let's have you become my test subject. Uh, no. First, let's have an explanation. Mm, as expected, you're a cautious one. As you know, I too was had a little trip between worlds. Yeah, you went to my world and came back. Although I don't know what happened. <laughs> it's a secret. Anyway. I had the opportunity for an other world journey, and from that experience I had a realization. Currently, all of our parallel worlds are in a dis 
are in a crisis of destruction. So, I was thinking, would it not be possible to take refuge in another world, in an outside world? Not within the parallel world structure here. I see. If we go to some other world, then we could avoid the calamity. Now, of course, it's no good if just we escaped. We'd have to set up a large-scale plan in order to get all the people we could through. No, that's not good. If, the, if our parallel worlds are destroyed, then our dimension that we're rooted to will successfully destroy us anyway. That's correct. This other world evacuation plan is theoretically impossible from the start. For instance, if we took refuge in Hakkinen's world, and afterwards our dimension was destroyed. In that case, we, although being in Hakkinen's world, would successfully be destroyed. Huh, even if we flee to other worlds, the disappeared dimen anybody from a disappeared dimension will be unable to avoid destruction themselves, huh? That's right. We'll be destroyed on a, on a particulate level. There will be no proof remaining that we actually existed. In other words, even if we were in Hakkinen's world, we'd be destroyed. And even the memories of our being there would be erased as well. I see. But you've done well to actually confirm all of that. Just how exactly could you have... No way! Hey, <laughs> you are a perceptive individual. Yes, and that's why I called you, Kasia. Without the power of the White Rabbit, there was someone who made contact with this world, isn't there? Who sent letters and equipment to Kasia. Dr. Yui, huh? Yes, that's right. So then I tried to send a message to the originating coordinates. And it succeeded spectacularly. I was able to get a message to Yui Hak, to uh, Dr. Yui in Kazuya's world. And there was a response right away from the other side. So, so Dr. Yui and I have been sending messages back and forth. You've corresponded with Dr. Yui. And not just messages, we can send items through as well. And the result of this, we've come to the conclusion, well, as we explained before, Material things and their presence is rooted in their original dimension. So if this dimension here is this, or if this dimension here disappears, everything we've sent over there will disappear. My collaborative research with Dr. Yui has come to that conclusion. No doubt about it. <laughs> but still, it's good that you've been able to communicate between worlds. It's said that they, that that's impossible even with the power of gods. Have you forgotten? Look at You fulfill a role like a interdimensional antenna. Before going through you, we were able to make message, send messages between the other world, between the parallel worlds, right? 
So, the communication to Calzia's world as well. As long as we've got our Luca antenna, it's possible. More and more of this turns strange. This conversation turns strange. And just why does this guy's Ahoge become an antenna? Uh, no, it's not that my Ahoge is an antenna. Oh, but the Ahoge is an antenna, you know? When your hair is out of order, our communication quality also gets worse. Ah, that's really how it works. Ah, mm, we've gotten a bit off topic here. So, that being the case, I've exchanged various theories with Dr. Yui. And, on the other side, they've tried to pull Kauzia back. Or at least they're working on it. So we did some tests to see if we could transport living creatures. So your test results are... Active yeast colonies were a success, but we sent freshwater flagellates and that it was no good. They came through in pieces. The banana, the banana test, the uh, banana transmission test was also a failure. It came out as gel. And the dogs and cats, we had a bit of pity on them and we stopped. So next, let's just skip on ahead to the real deal. Kozia, would you summon some courage for this? No way! If you gave up just one arm, it would be a possibility that you could get through, though. But if you're going to be like that, it can't be helped. Anyway, let's get into our primary topic. I've been entrusted with a message to you from Dr. Yui. A message from Dr. Yui. <laughs> Yahoo! Are you doing well, Kazuya? So, since it was found out that you got sent off to the other place, your place, your office and such, all those guys have been creating quite a stir trying to get through here. Mm, I think you've already heard about it, but sending through living things is pretty unstable, so it's not usable right at the moment. So I explained that to them, and now they're trying to, and now they're still wanting to come over there and help you out. If we use the things that I put into Mukuro, then if you ask it's possible, I think it's possible, but if you try and do it now, I don't think that Kalsia's spirit will really hold up. So, being troubled to find an answer here, Meira came to my to my laboratory once, and she gave me something really, truly revolutionary, and I'm sending it through. It's thanks for granting my wish. And she has said something like that, but I don't know about that. So I didn't understand. Anyway. If you wear that for a few seconds, just a few seconds, you'll be able to call out the folks from my room. The, the uh, coordinate mistakes have been ironed out pretty well. And not just the people from your office, but everybody from the my room can be called. We set it up so you can so you can do all these summons you like without hesitation and it won't break anything down in our laboratory here. So use it as much as you like. So then what she sent through is 
this ring. I, too, being curious, fiddled about with it some, but it seems this is only going to respond to you, Cassia. It doesn't respond to the physical sciences or the magical sciences. It's just not a target. It seems like it's deeply connected to your spirit somehow. Hmm. So, he takes the ring from Palmerstein and puts it on. And strongly feels a connection. Like the time when... Like that time with uh, Mukuro. Truly. Using this ring, he does get the feeling that the folks from my room will be able to respond. So, Kazuya can now summon monsters from my room. He needs to set the ability, Ring of Connections, and then he gets additional summons. Great, good, great. So then, I've told you all I needed to. It's unfortunate we can't do the experiment, but with this, we're concluded. <laughs> yeah, the experiment's out of the question, but it's encouraging that I'll be able to call out the My Room people. My Room is something from his game, I take it. I haven't played his game, so I don't know the details. Surely those of you who have will understand. So here we are. With this, kazuya has got a new power. It's going to be a big help in the future. After this, my notes say we need to do Witch. So Witch Succubus hangs out in the governor, gubernatorial mansion of the Succubus Village. At least she is at the moment. Alright, thanks for coming. It seems like there is a job that existed in the past but has been lost. According to the documents, in this job you could use psychokinesis to fight. In the time of the Great Holy Wars, some succubi a small portion of the highest level, we're able to learn it. Ah, that's Cycle Soldier, right? Ah, uh, come to think of it, I'm one too. Uh, so, Cycle Soldier's been lost? Since that time, nobody has learned it? Seriously? Now, at the very least, it's the first I've heard of it. And if I, the Ma'o, don't know of it, then it's no doubt. It, it has been lost. So in order to erase an entire job, I can't think of any other way than that Elias did it. But why would Elias have this have erased this uh, psycho soldier or whatever? Hmm, no doubt about it. It's Big Sis Lilith's fault. At the time of the Great Holy Wars, she really went overboard with the Chirikaze in particular. Hmm, it's, it's such a strong job. At the very least, we should try and get our hands on it. Somewhere in the world, there's got to be some job learn item remaining, I wonder. Well, to do that sort of sealing, they'd have to. Re they should have left a sample remaining in heaven. Uh, but that's not called Snow Heaven, isn't it? So then, let's go to Snow Heaven. With a new job, we can up, up the power level of our party. Uh, I'll just tell you right now that technique I mentioned, Chirikaze, you can't learn that. That was something that Lilith had special permi special exclusive permission to do. 
So maybe she can teach it? I don't know. <clears throat> anyway, let's go to Snow Heaven. It'd be nice if you teleport me out of the mansion for no reason. It'd be nice if there is an item still remaining that lets us do that. So, with regard to the Psycho Soldier job learning item, let's speak to Lanael, the chief of the village. Oh, do you have some business here today? And just a bit. We've got a little something to ask about. Something that was entrusted to the heavens. A certain good. Well, our physical goods are kept in the village storehouse. Please wait a bit. I'll have the person in charge look into it. So, under Lana Isle's direction, the her followers look through the information. So... The Sealing Chronicle... Uh, set to be sealed. Number 00290613. The Psycho Shard is... currently not in the village. As part of a commercial a commercial exchange. We gave it to the to the uh, polar bear settlement. You gave it to the polar bear girls. Now, according to the records, five years ago, in March. In exchange, we got three hundred thousand sockeye salmon. Sockeye salmon. We have fallen to earth, you see. Already, our bodies are unable to persist merely absorbing holy energy. Yeah, it must suck not being proper angels anymore. Ha ha. <clears throat> well, if that's the case, it can't be helped. Let's go to the Polar Bear Girl Settlement. Here are directions, thanks. All right, let's go. Let's see if we can get the Polar Bear Girls to give it to us. Freebie. All right. The job change item in question should be... Let's see if it's in this village or not. So let's talk to the person in charge. Person in charge is a. So which girl is in charge? Probably the polar bear girl in front of the building. Somehow she gives off a prominent feel. So let's hear the story from her. Yes, what is it? So we explained about the item we're searching for. That jewel is in the storehouse, but it's everybody's treasure, so we can't give it to you. Well, it is a first-rate good after all. Without any reason, we can't expect you to just hand it over. Those people saved me, so I want you to give them something of thanks. Oh, you're, you are, you're the polar bear girl that was lost before. Y'all remember that? If you haven't rescued that polar bear girl from the island, unmarked island in the, well, where was it? Ah, yes, yeah, so if you go west around, the Snow Heaven Island. If you just go south, you'll hit it. Anyway. So then, we're going to help you out too. Just wait a bit. I'll, I'll bring it out. This is what you want, right? Here. Take it. 
We got one Psycho Shard. Great, with this we can job change to the Psycho Soldier. With this, our objective, the job change item has been, has been uh, acquired. So it'll be a big help to us. Which is good, because when we actually rescued that polar bear girl, the reward was kind of shit. Next up. That. I'm a beer. Well, it's in my party, so let's go to Yamatai. Alright, we've re arrived at Yamatai. So, how do we plan on healing the village people? Intense contact. Huh? Since I possess the power of healing, if they come in contact with me, the people will be healed. So, I'm going to be giving free hugs in the village square. And having intense contact with many people. Free hugs. You. I wonder if this is going to go well. Anyway, nothing to do but try it. So we go to the village square in front of the Jinja shrines. Free hugs. Come exchange hugs with me. You said it, village people. You will be truly healed. Come, let us hug. Oh, it's almost like you're some kind of abomination. <clears throat> and none of the village people want to come close. Yeah, as expected, they're uh, keeping their distance. It looks like nobody's going to come in for uh, intense contact. Why, with regard to me, are you social distancing? You need not hold back. Let us have intense contact. Let us try not being evil. Not being completely hideous. <clears throat> Come, I shall hug you. Sure you will. In the end, none of the uh, village people felt uneasy and didn't come close. What has this come to? Not one person was able to give me a hug. That's... That's too bad, wasn't it? This is because my power is insufficient. I need to raise my healing powers and try again. Uh, I don't think that's going to actually resolve the root of the problem. It's not a question of the of her power, it's power of healing. It's because her, its appearance is so hideous. But as expected, we can't exactly just say it to its face. Well, if you want to talk about raising your magic power, I've got a good plan. The legendary treasure, the jewel of godly healing. How about you acquire its power? Jewel of Godly Healing. I have heard of that. If I had that power, my power would increase. Well, regarding that jewel, though, is it not currently a... Uh, it's, uh, its location is currently unknown, is it not? In the past, in the battle between the Lamias and the Skulas, ah, now that you mention it, we've got allies that were there at that time, in part, don't we? Queen Lamia and Queen Skula, we'd like to ask you about this. 
The Jewel of Godly Healing is a treasure of the Lamian people. It's a good that was created by Saja, the ancestor of the Lamias. <clears throat> the Jewel of Godly Healing was created by the ancestor of the Skulas, Hiruko. For that reason, it's a great treasure of the Skulin people. But the Skulas asserted their ownership of the jewel persistently. It came to be one of the causes of the great war between the Lamias and the Skulas. But the Lamias, like thieves, treasured the jewel for themselves. In order to protect our treasures, we the Skula people went to war. These stories aren't lining up. Spectacularly not lining up. As expected, the Lamias and the Skulas don't get along. So in the end, what happened to the Jewel of Godly Healing? That was, if I recall correctly, at the Battle of the Fortress of Aburun. That's right. The bombardment of the Skulas destroyed the jewel. It was the height of folly to be keeping such a treasure in disputed territory. The destruction of the jewel the responsibility for the destruction of the jewel rests upon the Lamian side. Uh, okay, so it's been broken then, in other words. So we can't get our hands on it, can we? But five, seven years after that incident, at the Niska Peace Treaty, it was decided that we would collaboratively restore the jewel. First off, we would have to infuse spiritual energy into the broken jewel. So it was decided that we would entrust it for several hundred years into a land that was filled with healing power. But then immediately after that, the Lamias surprisingly backstabbed us. Boan, a functionary of the Lamian people, did a sneak attack and ruined the, nego the peace negotiations. That was a grievous mistake made by Boan herself. And anyway, where was, not, was Boan not enticed to do such thing by the Skulas themselves? All right, all right. Let the past be the past here and forget about it. So the place where the jewel was laid to rest, where is it? The place is the world tree. Since it was a one-of-a-kind item, there were only three people who knew of, the loca of this location. Myself and Queen Lamia and Queen Alaraone, the Queen, Queen Alaraone of that time. We entrusted the management of the jewel, the broken jewel, to the plant tribes guarding the world tree. And Queen Alaraone is, at this point, been succeeded many times. You, current Queen Alarane. Have you heard anything from your predecessor? I am not the queen. I am just a flower blooming by the roadside. As always, the plant tribes are completely broken. Aruruna, you were the predecessor. Let's ask her. She was the predecessor. Let's ask her. That jewel was, if I remember, in the highest place within the world tree. So the top floor of the world tree is where the jewel of godly healing will be. 
So would you take me there? With the power of that jewel, I can increase my magic power, healing power, and then people will hug me. Ha, you wish. Yeah, but that's... Yeah. L anyway, let's go to the world tree. Luca, grow backbone. So this is blah 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 where the world tree is. Does anybody actually look at these maps anymore? Well, I guess I looked at it at one point. World tree. In case you forgot from 10 seconds ago, at the top floor of this tree, the jewel godly healing. Uh, but, but, yeah, let's climb the tree. It seems cruel, but shouldn't we tell it? Yeah. Well, let's do it when we find the jewel godly healing. Even if the jewel of God, the jewel's power lets Ama be a, increase its power of healing, uh, but we can't say that. Yeah, we can't be mean to an ungodly abomination, now can we? All right, we've discovered the jewel of godly healing. So it's been several hundred years kept safe here can't say it's completed, but it's... a lot of its power has been restored. But it's still going to take a long time for its complete resuscitation. So, it should be kept here for a while yet. On the other hand, maybe this is for the best. Its possession could lead to another war, you know. So then, excuse me, I'm going to borrow some healing power from the jewel. So Ama Bia reaches its hand, hand, question mark, out to the jewel. And the healing power gets drawn in. Ah. Uh, what a warm feeling this is. With this power, I'll be able to save the people of Yamatai. Um, this is kind of hard to say, but the problem isn't the strength of your magic power, so please wait a bit. This great power of healing is stimulating an evolution in me. Please tell me it's not transforming. Please tell me it's not transforming into something even more hideous. This is acceptable. <clears throat> okay. The power of the jewel of godly healing has evolved Amabia. And now the old eyes are now the raw ornaments. As long as they don't move, I suppose I won't complain. Ah, with the power of healing, my body has bloomed. Sonia, you always know exactly what to say. So then, let's return to Yamatai Village. With intense contact with the reborn me, the people will be healed. Okay, picture on the left it says Plague Elimination. Alright, accept hugs from me. So Ahamavia hugs people. Ah, uh, I'm being healed. Ahamavia, over here quickly. Hey, where's the end of this line? In the next village. Curves. Hey, don't cut in line. 
I was here first. You have already gone through once. This is your second time. Everybody who's gotten a hug needs to just pull out. Everyone, do not fight. Until everyone is healed, I will not leave this place. So, Amavia's free hugs are a big success. It seems like we didn't need to worry about it. I prepared 15 different ways of saying it so that we wouldn't uh, hurt its feelings. Well, I guess it's a her now instead of an it. Hurt her feelings. That feels weird. Ah, it seems like we didn't need that. Hug, hug. Oh yes, there's men in line and there's a bunch of women crowded around the polar bear girl. What does that have to do with anything? Kya, how cute. Over here, hug me too. Don't know about that, but the polar bear is also a success. I've got a great idea. With a free hug shop, I can make a fortune. If you take money, it's not free hugs. All right, you're next. Come hug. Mm. So with Amabia's free hugs, many people are healed. Great. Thanks to you, I was able to heal the people of Yamatai. But even beyond this, there are people who are stricken with illness. It bothers me. So I'm going to take my free time from now on and travel to other villages and towns. You don't need to accompany me on these journeys any longer. Mm, don't tell me you're going to be leaving the party. No, I owe you a res I owe you as well. With this evolved body of mine, I will also help you even more in your journey. Blah! Of course, I can also change to my old appearance. Let's not do that, okay? <clears throat> Alright. Thanks for helping us out and all. So then, let's return to our adventurous journey. In order to uh, heal the world itself. Oh, while we're on the topic, I have some good news. I found a little opening there and secretly, secretively collected a sample of Amabia's cells. So, I was able to succeed in forming some ingredients to allow a change to a human form. With this Amabia X, a new race change is possible. So humans can change to... no, no. Mermaids can change to humans. And I think I'll call it a day. We've got about four more things to do before the time loop. Oh, I shouldn't have mentioned that. <clears throat> Forget about it. So, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.